And it's an invitation. It's an invitation to come and see what the Lord has provided for you. Come and meet the Savior. Come and be reconciled to God. Come and receive the favor which is already extended towards you. Come and feel what he feels towards you. Come and understand the peace by which he wants to give you. Um, He wants to give you a hope. He wants to give you a joy. He wants to give you his very best. You see, his peace offering was not just a few quid, was not just paying off the debts. He gave the very best he had as a peace offering. Let me ask you a question. If somebody stole from you and they came to you and you were going to forgive them, would you give them the best you had? Would you give them that? The most precious thing that you possess, would you give it to them? Would you trust them with it? Would you say, this, this is just a symbol of how much I love you and how much I forgive you. This is how much I want to bring you home. Would you do that? The best of the best of the best. Everything you had, would you give it to them? The most precious pearl, the most priceless thing, the, the most loved son, would you, would you give them and trust them with that? Knowing what they were going to do with it, would you still do it? This is the glory. This is what we worship for. We don't deserve any of this. We don't deserve breath. We don't deserve air. We don't deserve drinks. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve the seat we sit on. We don't deserve it. It's given to us by heaven. It's provided to us by God. And he has given his, he has reserved the highest, the best, the most special, the most precious, the, the most valuable thing in heaven. It's called, he, Christ is often described as the darling of heaven. Yeah? The, the most beautiful. He's reserved it for the most unlovely, unlovable, unworthy, sinful, skeptical, unforgiving people. And he wants to shower upon you his best with his hand towards you and his smile towards you. You have his face and he sees you. And provides a savior and opens his hand towards you and asks you to receive his provision for your peace and for your joy so that you would have peace and you would have joy in the full knowledge that no matter what your circumstances, you are at peace with heaven and you will never be separated from that throughout all eternity. It's a tremendous gift. This little unassuming child in this tiny little place to nobody parents with, with nothing to scratch together, no brass farthings in my, to scratch together as my dad would have put it, with, with nothing to call home from nowhere land with an accent that probably would have been more like Jaywick than, than you know, Suffolk. And, um, and he had the power to open the door to heaven, to bring the smile of God to you, to open the hand of God towards you, so that when the angel appears, it wouldn't be in fear of your exposure, but would be covering for your exposure. It would be a a, a message of joy, a message of hope. Now, one of the most extraordinary things that's happened in the last... This is where the video is going to come in for us, Matt. One of the most extraordinary things that's happened in the last... In my living memory, anyway is um, the South Africa change with the apartheid. And some of you won't be old enough to remember this. Um, <laughs> never thought I'd say that. But um, in South Africa, it used to be the case that whites were separated from blacks. And if you were black, you were very much an underclass, subhuman, some would say. And if you were white, you were in the super race. It was called apartheid, and it was government policy. It wasn't just the way the culture did it. It was where the government had it. So there was separation, different entrances and exits for buildings, different rules. And there was massive atrocities that would get, um, kind of wreaked out on one another. Um, sometimes there would be kind of like 
terrorism, political terrorism, to try and change the system, and so people that were, in some senses, innocent from the white side would be hurt, and likewise, there would be atrocities and government-driven atrocities and racist atrocities that would be dealt out against black people. And when Mandela came to power, um, there was almost like, a, we're getting rid of a palatite now, so politically, we're getting rid of it, but it's still in the culture. And it, the pain is still in the culture, the suffering and the memories of all these people that have been through things and nobody has heard them and nobody has seen it was all in the culture. And they, they, they decided to do this thing called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And the idea was they would get um, people to tell their stories of what happened to them and they would get the people that had committed the atrocities to actually ask for forgiveness. How do you, how do, you do that when it's been torture? How do you do that when it's been... And